In this lesson, we're going to go ahead and finish off our space shooter game. Or as I have it here, the space shooter game. <laughs> anyway, uh, I was taking a look at the code. I did not realize we actually have the high score already hooked up and working. But I did make one mistake last video. I want to go ahead and address that first. If we go ahead into the pickup script, uh, while I was talking, uh, for some reason, I deleted these parentheses. And we weren't supposed to. If Well, let's take a look at it with it deleted. What's going to happen here is when you don't have parentheses under an if block, it's going to run that first line and that's it. So that means, let me just go ahead and space this out. That means this is the, the structure it's going to go for. It's going to go ahead and check to see if we hit the player and then it's going to check to see if we've already been hit. And if we haven't, then it's going to say that we have. But regardless of whether we've been hit or not, it's always going to call that pickup hit. So it kind of defeats the whole purpose of putting this little flag in here. So what we want to do is say, is if we got hit, go ahead, set that flag. And let's also call the pickup, but only if we haven't been hit. I'm going to go ahead, save that off. Let's get rid of the unwanted space. I am going to come back into the game. And my high score is working. So when I start off, I've got 100. Let's go set a new high score and then crash into something. Oh, come on. Oh, let's, let's make sure we hit it before we crash. <laughs> okay, I, actually, we got to get a new high score, so we need at least two of them. All right. Oh, crap. I was too busy looking at what I wanted to hit. All right, come on. It's because I make video games. doesn't mean I'm good at them. <laughs> All right, so I've got 200. And without those parentheses, when we hit stuff, it could possibly register more than once, depending on how many of our colliders hit. Now, if you've got a ship that only has one collider on it, I guess it really doesn't matter, but most of the time you're going to have more than one, or you're going to use something like a complex mesh, and we don't want that. All right, so I've got three, so let's just go destroy ourselves. There we go. And unfortunately, I lived. Yeah, great. Well, I guess I could just turn the um, enemy spawners on. But they will not have received the message to start spawning yet, will they? Well, our best bet is just to run into a really big asteroid. Uh, or two. <laughs> so everything blew up. Then if we go ahead and start the game again, it did not save the score. So let's go ahead and we'll check that out. So we'll open up score. And let's make sure it's listening for it. So the events it's listening to is reset score, check new high score, and add to score. So I'm going to come into the event manager. And I just want to make sure all these are done. So we have score points, take damage, respawn, start game. I don't even think we have them all implemented, do we? I'm just going to go ahead, set the side by side so I can see them both. Move it over a bit. So reset score. Uh, we don't even have that event listed or event registered yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, oh, it's going to be a long day, isn't it? On start game. We have that. Very first one. Now he listens for on player death. Second one. The third one, add score. Sorry, on score points. Down here. So when he dies, we're going to go ahead and call this check new high score. right there. And then when the game restarts, we're supposed to load high score. Ah, see, here's the problem. We're only calling it once when the game first starts, and that's not what we want. We actually want to call it when on start game. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. That means we'll just register two different events for it. There we go. And of course, you know what happens when we create a listener. We have to make sure he stops listening on disable. There we go. So if we go ahead, hit play, hit start. Uh, that's the old score from before. It was 100, then, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, then we got 300 last game. So let's go ahead and try to get 400. Mm, I'm assuming it's hidden behind something. Yeah, I'm on. 
There it is. Let's go. Whoa. And I missed. Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll just fast forward this. There we go. This will give us 400. And now all we gotta do is die. So we can line up a bunch of asteroids. Okay, let's do one more. Ah, and I missed it. That's okay. Oh, I can die. Come on. There we go. Finally. <laughs> so we go ahead. We start the game back up. There we go. 400. Exactly what we're supposed to have. So that means the only thing we got to implement now is being able to shoot those, um, the pickups. And that's really not that hard. I think we have a lot of that code already in place. I think we just have to call it. So I'm not going to need score. Uh, let me see. We got pickups. And this is what we want to call. So I'm going to jump back into lasers and in cast ray. This is where we're checking when the player shoots. So we're going ahead, we're casting out a ray straight ahead of us. And then we go down to spawn explosion. And this goes ahead and checks to see if it's a pickup or sorry, if it's um, something that has an explosion component on it, which it does not. So we can actually probably just add it in either spot. Uh, since this is spawns an explosion, I'm just going to go ahead and up here, say, if hit not hot, hit dot transform dot compare tag. The tag we're looking for is pickup, I believe. Let me just quickly check that. Prefabs pickup, uh, pickup. All right, so we got that. So if it's a pickup, we hit. Go ahead and do get, oh, sorry, not get component. We want to do hit dot, can we do right from here? No, we can't. So we need the transform dot get component. The component we want is pickup. And the method we want to call was, what, I've been hit or something like that. Uh, pickup hit. Uh, pickup hit. There we go. And just for sanity, I want to make sure that we just allow multiple components. Great. And that should be it. Uh, let's go ahead and save that. We do have to do a little bit of changing in here now. Now we have multiple lasers shooting, which means that we can hit it more than once. And we don't want that. So we have this up here where we're checking to see if we got hit. I'm actually going to move this down here now. So we'll say if we have not been hit, then do a bunch of stuff. So. I guess now we can get rid of that. Which means we can also get rid of this. Shrink the code up a little bit more. So I'm going to say got hit is now equal to true. And I'm actually we'll throw out a debug saying that we got hit and we'll call the points and destroy ourselves. So there we go. That should be everything that we actually need. Let's go try it out. This time we're going to be shooting it, not running into it. Well, I guess technically we should try both. Then a whole lot of tweakings. Uh, missed. Hit the asteroid. Come on. Keep hitting the asteroid. Guess we'll get a better angle at it. There we go. We hit it. Let's go ahead. We'll find it again. Let's shoot three of them. And of course, me just flying around, I'll go ahead and speed it up. Here we go. Oh, too high. So we hit the asteroid. There we go. We hit it. That's so cool seeing the explosions on the asteroid. And uh, everything seems to be going good. We got 200 points, so it's not hitting more than once. So we'll shoot it one more time just to make sure. And oh, yeah. the There we go. 
<laughs> wow, shot that one from far away. Anyway, there we go. We got it all done. Everything is working. Oh, wait, before I stop it, let's go ahead and run through one. Just to make sure that's still working. I did change code for it. Bam, there we go. And player hit us once. All right, so there we go, everyone. We are actually done this game finally. It took a while, but there was a lot of things I wanted to cover in this game. A lot of little, little different design things. So hopefully you've learned quite a bit and you can take this knowledge and start applying it to other games that you want to create. And while it may not be the most exciting game, with tweaking, I think it's still going to be pretty fun. Anyway, up next we're going to enter the world of 2D. And I find 2D uh, prototyping so much faster for some reason for me. But anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. So if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles. And falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.